Slavery was not unique to Africa or Africans, but was in fact common on every inhabited continent for thousands of years. As recently as the 18th century, it existed in Eastern Europe, and it continued to exist in the Middle East after the Second World War. What was unusual about Africa was the magnitude of the trade in human beings within recent centuries. Within Africa itself, slaves were used for a wide variety of tasks and under a wide variety of social arrangements. The classic plantation slavery of the Western Hemisphere was much less common in sub-Saharan Africa, and some of the forms of slavery shaded off into paternalistic incorporation of slaves into extended kinship with the slave-owning family, leading some to question whether this should be classified as slavery. However, such paternalistic arrangements were at one end of a spectrum that included brutal subjugation and even using slaves as human sacrifices. In some parts of Africa, such as Egypt, the Sudan, and Zanzibar, Africans were in fact plantation slaves on a large scale. Even where they were not plantation slaves, however, they often nevertheless lived separately from the free population, rather than in the kinds of paternalistic domestic living arrangements that existed elsewhere. In these other non-domestic occupations, mortality rates could be very high, as in Tanganyika and Zaire. The proportions of slaves in the general population varied, ranging from a minority to a majority even in a given region, such as the Sudan or Nigeria. Most African slaves remained in Africa. Indeed, those captured in the Sudan remained in the Sudan, and those captured in Nigeria remained in Nigeria. But the numbers exported were still enormous. In the middle of the 16th century, the total number of slaves exported from Africa was between 10,000 and 20,000 annually. Two centuries later, the number peaked at about 100,000 annually. Origins and destinations of slaves also changed dramatically. The bulk of the mid-16th century slaves were exported from the northern savanna and the Horn of Africa, but sometime after the middle of the 17th century, the west coast of Africa became the principal supplier of slaves, a position it was to hold for another hundred years, as the European demand for slaves in the Western Hemisphere overtook the demand for slaves in the Islamic countries of the Middle East and North Africa. The magnitude of the slave exports from Africa is particularly striking in view of the relatively thin population of the continent then, as now. The population of West Africa, where most of the Western Hemisphere slaves originated, has been estimated as about 11 million people at the beginning of the 16th century, increasing to about 20 million by the beginning of the 19th century. In some parts of Africa, such as the region of Angola and the Congo, enslavement was on a scale that exceeded the natural increase of population and resulted in depopulations of villages. In addition, the massive movements of captured people overland entailed a spread of disease. Cholera and smallpox, for example, followed the roots of the slave trade in East Africa. Markets for food and other provisions for the slave trade also grew up along its roots. The Arabs took more women than men, partly to fill the harems of the Ottoman Empire and other Islamic lands, so that the societies left in the African savanna tended to have an excess of men and children. The Atlantic slave trade took more men than women, using slaves principally for plantation labor, so that the West African societies from which slaves were taken had an excess of women and children. In both places, the resulting sex imbalance in African societies led to a revision of traditional sex roles, including an increase of polygyny in West Africa. In both areas, slaves were mostly young adults so that the slave populations were atypical of the general African population, nearly one-half of which consisted of children. By the time the Europeans discovered the Western Hemisphere at the end of the 15th century, Muslim merchants already dominated the slave trade in West Africa, as they did in East Africa and North Africa. The Islamic jihads of the 18th and 19th centuries created new Muslim states in West Africa, which in turn promoted enslavement on a larger scale. Altogether, between 1650 and 1850, at least five million slaves were shipped from West Africa alone. Inland tribes, such as the Igbo, were regularly raided by their more powerful coastal neighbors, and the captives led away to be sold as slaves. 
European merchants who came to buy slaves in West Africa were confined by rulers in these countries to a few coastal ports, where Africans could bring slaves and trade as a cartel, in order to get higher prices. Hundreds of miles farther south, in the Portuguese colony of Angola, hundreds of thousands of Africans likewise carried out the initial captures, enslavement, and slave-trading processes, funneling the slaves into the major marketplaces where the Portuguese took charge of them and shipped them off to Brazil. Most of the slaves shipped across the Atlantic were purchased, rather than captured, by Europeans. Arabs, however, captured their own slaves, and penetrated far deeper into Africa than Europeans dared venture, before the era of modern medicine provided the latter with some protection against the fatal tropical diseases for which they lacked biological resistance. Over the centuries, untold millions of human beings from sub-Saharan Africa were transported in captivity to other parts of the world. No exact statistics exist covering all sources and all destinations, and scholarly estimates vary. However, over the centuries, somewhere in the neighborhood of eleven million people were shipped across the Atlantic as slaves, and another fourteen million African slaves were sent to the Islamic nations of the Middle East and North Africa. On both routes, many died in transit. Moreover, these twenty-five million people were not the only African victims of slavery, for Africa itself used large numbers of slaves in many agricultural, domestic, military, and even commercial and governmental enterprises. The sum total of all the human beings who fell victim to the institution of slavery will never be known, even for Africa, much less for the world in general. The ending of the slave trade was one of many European policies imposed upon Africa by the conquerors. This did not mean the immediate freeing of existing slaves. Simply stopping the trading of slaves was itself a monumental undertaking, lasting for at least a century. As for the freeing of existing slaves, resistance and evasion by Africans, and especially by Arabs, made this a much more protracted process in Africa and the Middle East than in the Western Hemisphere. The very phrases used in these different parts of the world reflect their very different histories. While emancipation was usually a specific event at a specific time in the countries of the Western Hemisphere, the decline of slavery was a much longer and more uneven process in Africa, where slaves were still widely held in the early decades of the twentieth century. In some Islamic countries in Africa and the Middle East, slavery lasted even longer. Saudi Arabia, Mauritania, and the Sudan continued to hold slaves on past the middle of the twentieth century. Mauritania officially abolished slavery in 1980, though its own government admitted that the practice continued nevertheless. Indeed, Mauritanian government officials themselves have been implicated, and, more than a decade later, 30,000 black Africans were still being held as slaves in Mauritania, often under brutal conditions. On a smaller scale, slavery persisted in some other African countries on the eve of the 21st century. In one of the backwaters of Ghana, under local customs, some offenses required restitution in the form of turning over a virgin from the offending family to be a sex slave. Estimates of the number of girls involved run into the thousands. Commercial exploitation of young slaves also had not died out completely as a new millennium approached. Trading in children is a common practice in both Benin and Nigeria. The New York Times reported in August 1997.